There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. we worship, we worship, we worship. I will call upon your name. I am yours and you are mine come on hallelujah let's worship the Lord Lord and you are mine and right now I'm yours Lord Hallelujah. Come on, won't you just worship the Lord with us? Isn't God good to us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, and you are mine. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am. Everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now, try me now and see, see if I can be, see if I can be completely yours. Come on, let's live that together. I'm yours, Lord. Before we go any further, I want to bless God for all of those who work so hard behind the scenes to make sure. Come on, help me celebrate them. That's right. Our sound team, our media ministry, our band, our singers, our buildings and ground, our ushers, our intercessors, everybody. Brothers, help me with Parker. Come on, let's celebrate them. That's right. Hallelujah. It is certainly better when we do it together. 
I want to call your attention to a very, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. Yet the Lord speaks to us explicitly this morning. And I bless God for this beautiful, beautiful day, this warm day <laughs> that he has given us. God's good. And he's worthy of all the praise. And I'm certainly glad to see all of you. I hope that you know that I love each of you. Feel these great big arms. He received this great big air hug. I'm giving to you. I love all of you. And what a blessing to see you all this morning in the presence of the Lord. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 18 through 19. Matthew 16. Verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation this morning. Passion Translation. Matthew 16, verses 18 through 19. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about the presence of the Lord this morning and our word. Amen. Here begins the reading of God's word for us this morning. From Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. Verses 18 through 19. I give you the name Peter, a stone. And this is the truth of who I am will, of who I am, will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, my legislative assembly. And the power of death will not be able to overpower it. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom, heaven's kingdom realm, to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. And this truth of who I am, verse 18 again, I am will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church my legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to overpower it i will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven thus far the scripture lesson we begin a new series this morning. The new series is entitled, Let the Church Be the Church. Let the Church Be the Church. I'm going to ask some of you to do something very, very important. I'm going to ask some of you to check your lights. I don't want you to not be able to leave the service before we get out because I see some car lights on. Amen. I just want to make sure everybody's okay. God bless. I see you. Amen. What a blessing it is. I'm excited about the series that the Lord has given us this morning. I'm excited about what God's going to do through his word this morning. Amen. I give praise to God for the word of the Lord. Let the church be the church. Holy, I will be. Righteous, I will live. Walking in kingdom power. The global church is facing tests that feel impossible. We are being confronted with situations that we are ill-equipped to solve, absent from divine intervention, intercession, and a relentless resolve to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe his will is that these crises will result in Christ in us the hope of glory being revealed don't you dare think for one minute that God isn't fully aware of every iota that is happening in this pandemic God is fully aware of coronavirus he's already set a date for his eviction and you and I must be vigilant that's right, we must stand strong and we must declare the word of the Lord that God's kingdom will will be established in the midst of his people. 
You see, faith is the confident expectation that we that what we hope for is going to happen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible is clear that if we're going to come to God, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Conflict will confront unbelief in a way that nothing else can. This is the era in which the church of the living God will have to pass the test of faith. Now, a test is not a judgment or condemnation. A test is the assessment of one's current state of being. After all, Jesus is our rabbi. I am reminded of the parable of the persistent widow recorded in Luke 18, verses 6 to 8. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust said. Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry day and night to him though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? These massive events all seem to converge at the emergence of a decade, a new era in which the world is facing challenges unique to its particular age. But true to form, every age, every season, every hour has a unique grace unto itself. After all, God won't give you more than you can effectively steward which would imply that the impossible situations, my brothers and sisters, that we are currently facing are not impossible after all. Could it be, could it be that we are being faced with the opportunity for the greatest victory the church has ever seen? Could it be that we are being faced with the greatest victory you could ever experience. I know the challenges may have been many for some of you, but our God is in the mix right now to bring a turnaround and a healing for you. Listen, I hear the echo of the voice of Jesus throughout the pages of scripture. When he said in John chapter 14, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a place to give God praise. Hallelujah. The Bible is saturated with promises, implications, and testimonies that the impossible becomes a reality when you and I engage with the power of God. We are literally commanded to do the impossible. Somehow, May, many have neglected to realize that this will require us to face with un extremely challenging circumstances in order to exercise our faith. It would do us good to remember that the pages of scripture were penned in the midst of some of the most challenging oppositions the church has ever faced. We are facing some many, some great challenging times. Yet in the midst 
of the persecution, the challenges with the pandemic, the challenges with the racial divisiveness, we are called as the church to be the church. We are called to be the church. Circumstances, current events, opinions will never alter the message of the church. The church does not change in the midst of any anything that's going on. And when I say the church doesn't change, our message doesn't change. Who we are does not change. Let's look at our text. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, is where we see Jesus first use the word church. In the Greek, it is called ecclesia. The Greek translation, translated word church is ecclesia or the ecclesia the ecclesia the ecclesia was the term used to describe a group of people called out from the general population to serve in a government capacity if you were a part of an ecclesia you were a part of a governing body charged with making laws or guidelines for the benefit of the community. The Jesus kind of church is a gathering of Jesus kind of humans. When God first thought of man, he purposed man to be formed after his likeness and to be carriers of his divine nature. Jesus is not only our Lord, he is also the mirror image of our created purpose. Any way of thinking that undermines the identity of Jesus will also undermine our purpose. This reveals that our beliefs need to be consistent with the person of Jesus. We are designed to walk and to be Christ in the earth. You see, Jesus came in the flesh and lived the life in the flesh, which we are intended to live. Then he himself, glory to God, condemned sin in the flesh on Calvary's cross so he could give us his spirit that we might live the intended life that he had intended for us to live and we live it by faith. This is the Jesus kind of human which gathers with others to be the Jesus kind of church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be the Jesus kind of church is to be part of a legislative body tasked, tasked with enacting heaven's viewpoint in the earth. In a world like we're living in, that is full of sin and corruption, pain and death, God has placed the church, a group of people called out to make a difference and to improve the world through executing the king's agenda. When we, and only when we execute the king's agenda, the gates of hell, hell's authority stop. I'm gonna say it again. When we, and only when we, execute the king's agenda, the gates of hell, hell's authority is stopped. We as the church, amen. Somebody said, I hear you in the spirit. Come on, Bishop, get to it. When you're going to speak to my problem, I'm speaking to it right now. Because when you know who you are as the church, you can execute what God has called you to execute. You can move in what God called you to move in. You can be who God's called you to be. Amen, church. Amen, church. Hell's authority stops. His influence stops in our earth, in your home, in your family, when you know who you are and you exercise your authority in the kingdom. 
I hear somebody say, Bishop, you just don't know how tired I am. I'm weary. All it takes is for you to say, God, I'm going to do it your way. And in the name of Jesus, I'll trust you. I'll believe your word. And I'm going to stand and watch God move for you. You see, my brothers and sisters, we as the church have been given the keys to the kingdom. We have been given keys. The keys of the kingdom are divinely authorized resources that grant us authority and access. If you name the name of Jesus, if you look as his child, you've got access to all of heaven. You can walk in authority. You can walk in power. You can walk in strength. And you can walk in might. Isaiah 22 and 22 says, I will place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. And when he and what he opens, no man can close. And what he closes, no one can open. When we are to, we are, my brothers and sisters, we are to be actively engaged as believers in bringing heaven to earth. How do we bring heaven to earth? By accessing the kingdom rule. We just don't come together to sing a few songs. No, no. Get out praise on. Fellowship with one another. But we come together as the church to learn how to access divine viewpoint and live in, live in God's kingdom rule for us. This is why it's important that even during the pandemic, during all of the uneasiness that's in our country, that you are connected to a church, a local church, which exercises and operates with the keys of the kingdom. We operate here at Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries, the keys of the kingdom. Amen. You might say, how, Bishop, do we operate the keys of the kingdom? The text tells us, verse 19, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom, his kingdom realm, to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven, and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. The church is used is to use its keys, heaven's viewpoint, and spiritual resources to forbid, to bind, to restrain, to release, to loose, and set free. Now look how good God has been to us. Even right now, as warm as it is, supernatural breezes is blowing in our open air cathedral hallelujah listen this is the hour you and I as the church must arise and act heaven is waiting on us to forbid and release so heaven can get involved in the earth you and I together must legislate what belongs here. So you may say, where do I begin? In my closing. And I want to take my time because the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me the other day about you and I and about the shift that is indeed coming within our congregation. A powerful, powerful shift is coming in the midst of this congregation and the release of divine authority and power is moving in the midst of God's people like never before this past Thursday was a powerful time for many of the Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministry citizens and indeed Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries itself 
We ended our day of fasting on last Thursday with a corporate gathering of prayer virtually. I, along with our ambassador of prayer, Elder Tanya, the intercessors, the royal priesthood, our musicians, First Lady, Pastor Eric, and Mother Porter, gathered in the sanctuary while many of you joined us on Zoom. From the onset, there was a tremendously powerful presence and a manifestation of God's glory as we interceded for you. Elder Daniel, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, began to utter prophets arise, declare the word of the Lord. And while God is currently elevating the office of prophet to its proper place, he has called this house to understand that we are called to be a prophetic community. Hallelujah. Now you say, Bishop, what does that mean to me? I'm going to help you. A prophetic community is not just the local body in which all understand their prophetic role and are equipped to prophesy, but it is a church full of Jesus kind of humans that identify their God-given assignment to declare the word of the Lord. The entire body of Christ has been given a mantle to prophesy so that we express and accept our role in the community that God has designed us to be. We all need to accept this prophetic role, which means training and equipping the entire body to declare the word of the Lord. Amen. The gift of prophecy in the church is no mere desirable option. It represents the very essence of the new covenant that Jesus inaugurated. As Peter indicated on the day of Pentecost, this pouring out of the Spirit on all flesh is that gift of prophecy that creates a prophetic community. Those who possess the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Listen, all of God's people are called to be prophetic and to participate in a prophetic community. I use the term prophetic to describe the generalized function of the people of God in whom is resting the Holy Spirit and who are called to continue the works of Jesus so that the Holy, through the Holy Spirit and continue to practice the gifts of prophecy. This is not to say that all God's people are anointed and called to be a prophet. Prophecy is a gift freely given, but the leadership role of the prophet is uniquely given to those distinguished by a specific divine call. The Bible describes a new covenant community as a prophetic community filled with and led by the Spirit which will continue to do and teach as Jesus did. They do it as the Spirit anointed witnesses. They do it like prophets. This is the essence of the prophetic community. God's call to all to minister in his gifts, especially to prophesy. We are called to demonstrate the kingdom of God in our normal life, everyday life inside and outside the walls of the church. We all have been given grace so that we all can be empowered to minister in his gifts in every place and to every person we are sent to. This is how we all participate in the mission of Christ. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we'll go to all the world to preach the gospel and signs and wonders will follow. Well, Bishop, what are you saying? We over the next few weeks will learn how the church 
is to be the church, but it starts with you learning how to open your mouth and declare the word of the Lord. It's easy for you to cry over your problems, get frustrated, want to throw in the towel, complain to others. I'm saying from this moment on, learn to speak to your situations, your challenges, the things that confront you, and declare the word of the living God. Speak power, speak deliverance, and bind the devil, and watch him flee as you declare the word of the Lord. Let the church be the church. I want to speak to you in my closing remarks, and then I'm going to pray for you. I want to speak to where many of you are right now. By the spirit of the living God. I want you to understand why you are dealing with what you're dealing with right now. I'm going to do my best. Whoever hollered that out, thank you. Strength only comes to you through opposition. You won't grow stronger unless you're put in opposition. Growth only comes if you're willing to transition. You must learn in this season to master transition while in opposition. Because out of this, you're coming into a new and greater place which the sovereign Lord has ordained you to walk in. Don't you dare throw in the towel because it's getting difficult. Don't you dare give up because the opposition is great. What God is doing for you is bringing you to a place of strength, to a place of power, and to a place where you will walk as God has called you to walk. I want you to know you're getting stronger every day. I dare you give God the greatest praise. You've given him all morning. You are to be You are to be who God called you to be And you are to be it now Listen I'm Getting ready to pray for you As the Lord directed me And gave me a special prayer assignment To pray over you and your families this morning. I'm going to ask the elders to come stand in front of me. Every one of them that can. And they're going to point their hands towards the cars. Line up all across the front. You see, Things are not as usual. Y'all move closer to the cars. Right across the front. That's right. Make a line of prayer. And as their hands are pointed towards you, I'm believing that the anointing of Almighty God is going to touch you and your families as we prepare to pray. Listen, it, oh my God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place right now. I feel the power of God moving in this place right now. That's right. I see. I see children stretching their hands. See adults just lift their hands up. Go on and worship. God is up to something for you and your family. I know it's been rough. I know you've been attacked. But God is bringing you to a place of strength. Because we the church will be the church. We will walk in kingdom power. 
we will walk in kingdom authority as we prepare to pray i just wonder can you just open up your mouth and give him glory come on open up your mouth and begin to exalt the lord go on and praise him those of you that are watching us by home watching us virtually in your home excuse me go on and praise the name of jesus go on and give him glory because he's worthy the king of kings is worthy i said because he's worthy the king of kings is worthy come on release it because he's worthy the king of kings is worthy come on sing that with us because he's worthy worship the Lord as I pray over you and your families over the next several weeks I'm going to be praying specifically and addressing some prophetic things this is a new era this is a new dimension of the spirit the church is in a new place we will never be the same I said we will never be the same you will never be the same. Your family will never be the same. I serve notice. I serve notice. I serve notice that here we come. We are emerging to a new place that God has called us to walk in. Here we come. Boldly we come. With power and strength we come. Anointed we come. So let's pray. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, over my family, over Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and their families in the name of Jesus. In fact, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over this entire Eastern Panhandle I plead the blood of Jesus over the tri-state community in the name of Jesus. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you and every principality, power, and ruler of darkness, spiritual host of wickedness in heaven, every evil spirit, every demonic spirit that's not of God who attempts to operate against the people of God. I cancel every hex, every spell, every work of witchcraft, every divination. I cancel black magic, psychic mind control, sorcery, and bewitchment that was sent to oppose us. I cancel every attack of oppression, depression, perversion, distraction, and hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus. I render every assignment, attack, and scheme, harassment, and powerless and active and ineffective things against us in the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Every lying tongue is silenced, and every enemy that rises up against is smitten before our face. I cast you out of the lives, the homes, the circumstances. I cast you out of the finances and the neighborhoods of the people of God. Your works have been destroyed. 
and we are free. Devil, everything that you have stolen from us. Devil, everything that you have stolen from us. I command you to repay as unto us sevenfold. I speak life. I speak life to every area of our lives that you have tried to destroy. I counsel all hurt, harm, and danger. I counsel accidents in our lives in the name of Jesus. I counsel all attacks against our family to bring strife and division, harm and rebellion. For God has given us peaceful habitation, safe dwellings, quiet resting places, that we will dwell together in unity. I cancel every attack of sickness and disease and pain and infirmity sent against us. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and with his stripes we're healed I counsel attack against the finances of God's church for we are the seed of Abraham we are blessed above all nations I call the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous for money and wealth come to the people of God now in the name of Jesus God release ideas, release checks in the mail, lower mortgages in the name of Jesus. Give favor, let contracts be signed, mortgage deals signed in the name of Jesus. I speak it for the people of God. I cry out to you to do it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I rebuke, cast out the spirit of fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, and unbelief, for it has no place in our lives. I pull down all strongholds and cast down every vain and wicked imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. I root up every plant in us that the heavenly father has not planted and replace it with the image of God I decree the spirit of power love and a sound mind be established in the people of God through the word of God I loose into your life the anointing of God to destroy every yoke to remove every burden the word of God in your mouth and in your minds and your heart. That you will yield the fruit of the spirit. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. I pray that the gifts of the spirit be activated in your life as never before. And that the church of God would rise and set the captive free in Jesus name. If you believe it and are in agreement, shout unto God the voice of triumph and give him praise.
Spirit is coming to lead us in our closing. But I need you to know you will never be the same. I speak to your family. I speak to your mind that you will grasp the thought that you will never be the same. You will never be the same. We will never be the same. No, never be the same. In Jesus' name. God is empowering the church locally. He is empowering Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries in this season as we prepare for a greater global platform. Things will be shifting in greater ways. You will see an acceleration of the anointing yes, sir. as we prepare for global ministry. I hear the Holy Ghost. There's a strong prophetic river even flowing now. Hallelujah. Prophetic voices, if you hear God, just walk this way. We must release all to the people of God. This is a season that we must saturate them with the word of the Lord to the point that they'll begin to declare the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Prepare the shift. That's right, I know the elders heard me. I wanted you to lay your hands on every call. Uh-huh, somebody heard it in the spirit. Thank you, Elder Ambassador Prayer. That this prophetic anointing and power is released to you in your homes. Hallelujah. 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 The enemy say you won't do it. You won't be able to touch them. You won't be able to breathe on them. Oh, I want you to know that heaven created us and brought us outside so the wind of God could blow upon us as we worship. So I say, wind of God, come upon us and blow upon us. In Jesus' name. Come, Pastor Eric. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost. I feel him. I feel the Holy Ghost. The
declare the word of the Lord. For wealth and riches are in our homes. We declare the word of the Lord. For we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the fields. We declare the word of the Lord. We are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. We declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophets arise and declare the word of the Lord. I think now for at least a year and a half, we've been talking about the open mouth and speaking with thus saith the Lord. It was first birthed through Deacon Marcus Sampson. And then we had Elder Brown come and preach a word. And then for the next nine months, up until this very moment, God is still saying the same thing. So we have to be mindful of what God is saying to open up our mouths and to declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe God is coming in a great in a great way. And he's moving. And God moves as we open our mouth and speak his word. Hallelujah. And as we speak the word of the Lord, he begins to arise. As we speak the word of the Lord, he begins to take his rest. As we speak the word of the Lord, we begin to watch God do. Amen. What he does best. And we honor him. And we praise him for all that he has done. One more time, just lift your hands up all over the parking lot, all over the airways, and release your worship to the Lord. Come on, just release your worship to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Release your worship to the Lord. Allow the Lord to begin to intervene in this moment, wherever you are. Hallelujah. the next seven days of our lives the goodness of the Lord the favor of the Lord the blessings of the Lord hallelujah that be upon you and your household hallelujah we have not seen anything yet hallelujah we're walking into our best days we're walking into our favorite days hallelujah because God is indeed moving for his people. Bless the name of the Lord. And maybe there's one that has not given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We say it all the time. But Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to many of us that's here in this morning. Jesus is the only one that can present you faultless before the throne. He's the only one that can keep you from stumbling. He's the only one that knows how to pick you up, how to turn you around, and how to place your feet on a solid ground. He is Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords, and he is the King of Kings. So if you have not made him your Lord and your Savior, today's your day. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and you shall be saved. In these uncertain times, you don't want to be uncovered. You don't want to be unsaved. So I encourage you, man. I encourage you, woman. I encourage you, boy. I encourage you, girl, that's watching this morning to give their lives to Jesus Christ because he's the best thing that can ever happen to you. And listen, under this open heaven, under this open cathedral, we want to invite you to join Kingdom Life with Deirdre Ministries where every day we are birthing people of purpose, passion, and power for the transformation of the world. We are a people that are committed to God that celebrate one another, and that cultivate our community. If you have not joined Kingdom Life with Future Ministries yet, today's your day. If that's you, just go on and slip your hands out your car. We'll send someone over to you. 
if you want to be a part of KLCM. And I believe also there was someone that joined during this week. If you're one of those ones that's them that joined this week, you slip your hand up as well so we can acknowledge you and celebrate with you. Amen. Come on, there's a hand that's going up. Someone put those hands on the horn and let's let our sister and our family know, amen, that we appreciate and acknowledge them about being a part of Kingdom Life. If there's someone that's watching, you go on and type that you want to join, and we'll contact you, we'll get your information. For the family that joined, we're going to take your picture, amen, so everyone can see you and your beautiful kids, and they can celebrate you on our Facebook page. This is what it's all about. It's about extending the kingdom of God and doing the work, amen, that God has called us to do. As we continue in our time of giving, amen, we want to give as unto the Lord. We know that online you can give via the online uh, giving from our website, www.kingdomlifecathedral.org. You can text to give. You can even give as you leave today. And many of you may have already given from one of those devices already. God bless you. We can do all this because of you, because of your generous giving. And it's nice to be nice because it's what? And we show the ones that we love that we want. The Bible says to give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But give unto God what belongs to God. We don't have any fees at KLCM. We don't have any robbers here. And we're going to give God what belongs to him. So again, as you leave today, we have Brother Brian here. He's going to transition you over. Apostle Sterling, Dr. Yvette. Someone from uh, security, someone from finance are over there to greet you, to receive your giving. Mm -hmm. But listen, it's better to give than to receive. And we bless God for all that he has done. We love you. Please stay tuned in with us and connected during this week. We have so many things. On tomorrow night as you're leaving, amen, our announcements. We have the women's ministry tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Amen. So check us out. Go to the Facebook page and see those other announcements. We love you. God bless you. And may the favor of God be with you through this week. Amen. The mission of Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries is to fulfill God's purpose and to extend his kingdom to birth a people of purpose, passion, and power for the transformation of the world. People that are committed to God that celebrate one another and cultivate their community. Do you need prayer? Do you desire someone to stand with you and agree with you? Look no further. We have iPrayer available for you on Sunday between 9 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Our elders and ministers are there for anyone in need. You can dial in or connect via Zoom. The dialing number is on this flyer and the Zoom link is posted in the description of the live broadcast. Next Sunday, join us virtually for our Sunday morning worship at 9.45 a.m. We will be streaming right here on Facebook Live. Log on with the expectation of a mighty move of God. Attention women, please join us tomorrow for the Monday Ministry Moment. We are looking for all the women of KLCM, female friends, and followers to join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. Please check our KLCM Facebook page for the meeting link. Are you up early in the mornings? Then please join the KLCM prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and be led in prayer by our very own Apostle Sterling Porter. All you need to do is dial in to the conference call number and enter the access code. The number is 712-770-4010 and the access code is 645-162. Please join us for our Hour of Power teaching series, A Better Way, A Better Life, the study of the book of Hebrews. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., Apostle Sterling Porter will go live right from Facebook. This is a series you don't want to miss. Also at 7 p.m., our children's ministry will have their own teaching live on YouTube with Elder Akio Wilson. To find our YouTube page, go to youtube.com or open the app 
and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and look for our logo. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our page. We encourage everyone to join us for an awesome time in God's Word. On Thursday at 7 p.m., Elder Ralph Wilson will go live on Zoom for our youth Bible study. The Zoom link will be posted on our Facebook page. This is primarily for the 13 to 18 year old age group. We ask that all adults, unless you are a parent of one of our teens, not to join the live stream. We want to ensure that our teens have every opportunity to interact with their teacher. We appreciate your understanding. Through the month of July, we will continue to have daily check-ins with our KLCM citizens. Check-ins will only take place on Fridays at 7 p.m. We will go live right from our Facebook page as well as our conference call line. You will continue to receive a word of encouragement as well as a word of prayer. We are looking for all our members to plug in and let us know how you're doing. Even though we are not meeting together physically, we still need and are looking for you to be faithful in your tithing offering. We have five ways available for you to give. You can download the Give Plus app and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and follow the instructions. Text to Give is also now available. Just send a text to 304-398-6627 with your giving amount, then hashtag tithe, offering, building, speaker, or pastor, and then click send. It's that easy. Note, if it's your first time, you will be prompted to create an account. You can also give online at www.kingdomlifecathedral.org and scroll until you see the online giving banner. You can also give via the mail, sending it right to our P.O. Box. That information should include KLCM, P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438. And finally, you can bring it to the church and give during our Park and Pray services. Missed the announcements? Don't worry. You can watch the replay of this service or head to our YouTube page and watch the announcements there. Thank you for your attention during the announcements. Remember, it's your moment of time to live the kingdom life.